rolling out Starship, stacking the world's largest rocket, and a heaping helping of a Starlink launch to top it all off? Elon Musk's SpaceX has just experienced the most hectic 15 hours of work. The burst of activity began around sunset at SpaceX's Starbase rocket factory in Boca Chica, Texas, when a new orbital-class Starship prototype left its nest for the first time. SpaceX rolled the Starship known as Ship 25 a few miles down to the highway, down the highway to its nearby launch and test facilities, where workers connected it to a large crane and waited for daybreak. At around 9 a.m. CDT the following day, October 20th, SpaceX lifted Ship 25 onto one of two Starship test stands, where it will eventually attempt to complete several qualification tests. While Ship 25 was still suspended in mid-air, the Starbase Launch Pad's orbital launch tower began lifting a different prototype, Ship 24, into the air with a pair of giant chopsticks, or mechanical arms designed by SpaceX to replace one of the largest mobile cranes in the world. Then, while it was stacking Ship 24 on top of Super Heavy Booster 7 and installing Ship 25 on a test stand, a Falcon 9 rocket carrying 54 new Starlink satellites lifted off from Cape Canaveral, Florida. Minutes prior, SpaceX finished craning a reused Falcon 9 booster off one of its drone ship landing platforms in a port 10 miles south. Starlink 4-36 was SpaceX's 48th launch of 2022 and 56th launch in less than 12 months so its Falcon launch program simply doesn't have time to waste. The drone ship Just Read the Instructions, or JRTI, returned to port with Falcon 9 booster B-1069 about 12 hours before the rocket was transferred from the ship's deck to a stand on SpaceX's Port Canaveral dock space. The company will now be able to retract B-1069's legs and complete any necessary booster and drone ship refurbishment, ensuring that both will be ready for their next missions in the near future. Back in Texas, SpaceX is scheduled to begin thoroughly testing a fully stacked Starship rocket for the first time as early as Monday, October 24th. Ship 24 was reinstalled on Booster 7 for that purpose after SpaceX disassembled the pair for several days, possibly due to forecasts of high winds. The test campaign is expected to begin with the first full wet dress rehearsal, or WDR, of a two-stage Starship, meaning that the rocket will be fully loaded with thousands of tons of liquid methane and oxygen propellant and run through a simulated launch countdown that ends just before engine ignition. If successful, SpaceX will likely restart Booster 7 static fire testing and continue to work its way to the first simultaneous ignition of all 33 of its Raptor 2 engines on the booster. If the pair survived the WDR and static fire testing, SpaceX could begin preparing the same rocket for Starship's orbital launch debut. If significant issues arise during testing, SpaceX could choose to retire Ship 24 and or Booster 7 and move on to a new and improved pair, which is likely to be the Ship 25 and Booster 8 or 9. Already complete, Super Heavy Booster 8 has been sitting untouched at Starbase's launch site for weeks, making it uncertain whether SpaceX actually intends to test or use the prototype. Booster 9 is just one stack away from completion, at which point it will be ready to begin proof testing. According to CEO Elon Musk, B9 features significant improvements that will make it more resilient to mid-flight Raptor engine failures. It could also be the first Super Heavy booster with no hydraulic system, thanks to a new version of Raptor that replaces hydraulic thrust vectoring with a battery-powered alternative. Starship S25 could kick off its own proof testing as early as next week. Unlike Ship 24, 25 went straight from the factory to a test stand that has been modified with six hydraulic rams. Those rams will simulate the thrust of six Raptor 2 engines, which is up to around 1,400 tons or 3.1 million pounds of force, while the Starship is simultaneously loaded with cryogenic liquid oxygen and or nitrogen, combining peak mechanical and thermal stresses into one test. Once Ship 25 is done, 
it will be rolled back to the factory for Raptor engine installation and will eventually return to the pad for static fire testing. New Marine Safety Information Bulletin slash Notice to Mariners was issued for possible Starship testing on the 21st through the 28th of October of 2022 with testing windows from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. Now let's shift our attention to NASA's $10 billion machine and its newest discoveries. The James Webb Space Telescope just gave us a fresh look at Hubble's most iconic target. Located in the Eagle Nebula, this region of sky is a massive star nursery. Some stars are still forming within those towers, while others are beginning to emerge from their dusty cocoons. As the young stars grow, they sometimes shoot out bursts of matter. You can see these bursts at the edges of the pillars, marked by wavy lines. The nebula is so densely packed with stars that no nearby galaxies are visible in the distance. Until now. JWST's near-infrared camera cut through thick dust clouds to capture this incredible view. Back in 2014, Hubble recaptured the site in visible light, with glowing clouds of dust illuminating the dark pillars. As you can see, at infrared wavelengths, Hubble captured a similarly star-studded view in 2015. But with the new JWST, we now have a freshly illuminated portrait of an instantly recognizable object. The Webb Telescope proves its worth once more as it spies galaxies merging around this monstrous black hole. An international team of scientists made the surprising discovery as they were using the web to peer billions of years back in time. The finding represents an opportunity to observe how early galaxies merged, forming the universe as we see it today. The blindingly bright quasar and extremely red quasar known as SDSSJ16520.64 plus 172852.3 is about 11 and a half billion years old and one of the most powerful ever seen from such a tremendous distance away according to researchers who describe it as a black hole in formation Andre Vayner Research co-author and an astrophysicist at Johns Hopkins University in Maryland said in a statement, We think something dramatic is about to happen in these systems. The galaxy is at this perfect moment in its lifetime, about to transform and look entirely different in a few billion years. Even Vayner, who had imagined observing this quasar with JWST as much as a decade ago, was shocked that the space telescope which only started sending science images back to Earth in July, has produced observations of the region with such clarity. It really will transform our understanding of this object. And that's it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time.